morning, my darlings. Ooh, my chest muscles feel so tight this morning. I don't know what it is. I need to do those exercises where you open up your chest muscles. Um, <laughs> so random. Good morning, darlings. I'm having one of those mornings where I am just procrastinating and doing everything possible to avoid going on my laptop <laughs> because I know that I have so much admin that I need to get along with. It's stuff that maybe you don't envisage that I have to do with my line of work, but it's um, the admin I would say actually takes up a huge, huge, huge amount of my time. For example, things like sending analytics to brands when I've completed a project, you need to send all the backend analytics so that brands know how many people clicked clicked on your links, what the age demographic of those people was, um, how many views, how many XYZ analytics, reading contracts, selecting products for upcoming campaigns. I mean, it's all stuff that I don't mind doing and I do really enjoy the business side of it, but uh, the admin of this of this job does take a very long time and I'm just avoiding doing it today because I know that when I sit down at my laptop, that'll be me gone for at least a few hours. And it's fairly nice, it's a fairly nice day today, so I want to just get other stuff done first. My favorite form of procrastination, as always, is um, tidying and organizing. So I have actually already, although looking at it now, it doesn't look that tidy, but I did reorganize my lowest drawer, which is this one down here. And I know it actually doesn't look that organized, but I basically went through all of my nail varnishes, which are in here, um, and got rid of any that I didn't like the look of anymore. I had nail varnishes just like thrown into this drawer, so now they're all in that case. I've put all of my nail tools in here, so I've got my buffing blocks, I've got my very bougie Dior nail polish remover, um, and then I've got all of my hair brushes and sprays down here, all my false eyelashes back there. So that felt very satisfying, tidying up that drawer. I actually did that organizing while my fake tan marinated <laughs> because I wanted to tan because I might potentially be going to a spa with my girlfriends Vicky and Hannah tomorrow so I wanted to be a little bit more bronzed um, because I have felt a little bit in need of tan lately so I've put on the Ashley Graham Saint Tropez and then I thought I would add a few curls to my hair and I switch around between the air wrap and the corel, but today I used the corel because my hair was already dry um, and I just used my usual technique that I finally taught myself how to do last year of just getting about an inch of hair, clumping it, twisting it at least one full turn away from my face and then dragging it down. And then I let my hair cool with those kind of rings in situ for about five minutes, um, during which time I'll check my emails or whatever. And then I will add some hairspray. Today I also added in some dry shampoo. This is the Kerastase dry shampoo. It's one of the most more luxurious dry shampoos that I've tried recently. I still think Batiste is the best for if you just want total mattification, but I like how my hair feels and smells more when I use this one. You might have noticed that it set my Dyson fan off on a little bit of a mad moment, but I find that so satisfying because as well as obviously working to control the temperature in this room, it can I can make it up to, I think, 37 degrees in here, um, or cooling down the room, which is very useful actually, because up here on the top floor and even in the winter, if we have the fires on downstairs and the and the underfloor heating, this room can get really, really hot. And especially if I'm filming with all the lights on. So having that there to control the temperature is amazing. But what I find even more satisfying, I did take a little video clip while it was in action, I'll pop on the screen here, is that it detects any um, bad particles in the air. So if there's any any pollutants, whether that is from what's going on outside, it could be a farmer fertilizing his fields, or what I'm doing inside, spraying perfume, um, using a dry shampoo, it's purifying the air and it actually has a graph on the screen and it tells you how many, you, you might have seen a number getting down and down and down, that is the number of pollutants or um, bad molecules in the air that it is drawing out, which is very, very satisfying. So now that my air is pure up here in the dressing room, I'm gonna do a little bit more tidying. I'm gonna do some makeup brush cleaning. Ooh, I've got lots of makeup brushes that need to be cleaned. Um, I've just got lots of things that need putting away and I need to give this space a good old clean. So, oh, I mean, where do I start? Where do I start? I think I will start with some chocolate. 
monstrously moorish chocolate caramel shapes these are the ones i got from treat well they are hotel chocolat and they're absolutely delicious <laughs> r.i.p death by chocolate <laughs> the tidying I wanted to share guess what these are <laughs> they are the fluffy um what do you call it they are the fluffy sleeve and trouser hems from my sleeper pajamas I'm not gonna lie ever since I first washed them I have not bothered to put these fluffy bits back on I think I love wearing the sleeper pajamas and I think they look great when they have got this fluff on but I'm not gonna lie it's just so much faff taking them off and putting the fluffy bits back on again every time I wash them so now when I'm wearing the pajamas at home I just don't bother putting the fluff on but if I'm gonna take some pictures then I'm gonna store these in a drawer because they've literally just been sat in the background up there for the last like three weeks because I cannot be bothered to put them back on that was a very boring <laughs> segue Hopefully someone else will get that because it takes me about three minutes to get downstairs from up here. Um, and then I have been cleaning my surfaces with the Kinfil glass and mirror. I love this bottle because it's got the little silicone base. So when I put it down, it doesn't suddenly crash into my um, lovely worktops. And then I've just got an old face cloth. And this one is particularly good for in here because all of my worktops are mirrored. They do get a lot of fingerprints. They do get a lot of, um, they get quite matte and non-shiny especially if I have been spraying hairsprays and things so I like to keep this on hand and I just wipe my surfaces down every couple of days really it's one of the habits that I've got myself into so everywhere's looking quite significantly tidier now I think I'm probably going to leave my makeup drawer to organize on a rainy day and then as we go into my powder room this is another area that I have been really putting off tidying so this is um, a selection of baskets of new in beauty products. So these are pieces that have been sent by brands for me to try out. And I just haven't had time to organize through it. So basically what I do is I make uh, three piles. What I normally do is anything that I'm gonna keep, I will keep in the cupboards here. Excuse my nails, I'm getting them done hopefully this week because they are this one annoyingly chipped, which is such a shame. So we're going so well otherwise. Um, yeah, so I'll do anything that I'm gonna keep that's part of my usual skincare routine will go in my cupboards. Then I usually have a pile for friends. If there's something that I know friends will like, I pop those in a pile and I normally have a basket or a drawer where friends can rummage through when they come. Or I'll normally prepare a goodie bag um, <laughs> and give it to friends as they're leaving. Everyone always leaves here with a goodie bag, whether it's a friend or even our cleaner, <laughs> everyone leaves here with a goodie bag. Um, and then obviously as we're coming to that time of year for gifting, there's lots of places around here that I do like to, sorry, I'll flip you around. There are lots of um, ways that we like to donate products as well. So whether it's literally a charity giveaway, I'm actually posting a box of goodies um, later on today over to the US for a charity auction that's going on, I believe in Florida, but I'm not entirely sure. And then also, of course, lots of local things. There's a care home nearby that always does like a Christmas market for its residents. So Charlie and I like to donate lots of products to that. So I normally separate into three piles keep friends and donate so that is something that again I just don't know if I've got the brain power for it right now sometimes I'm really in the mood for sorting and tidying but right now I'm more in the mood for cleaning <laughs> let me know if you guys like that as well but I have to be in a really specific mood to do something but the sun's actually coming out so I think I might even head into the garden later because it's that time of year where there's lots of like preparing for next year that needs to be done but all of these jobs are just so time consuming and then I work myself into a lather because I can't decide which of these time consuming jobs to do first and then I end up doing none of them I'm sure I'm not alone let me know if you can relate okay next job and that is actually my favorite job which is vacuum cleaning 
As you may know, Charlie and I are Dyson ambassadors, which could literally not be any more perfect because I don't think I've ever met anyone in my entire life that loves vacuum cleaning quite as much as Charlie and I. Um, and now that we have this house, which is very old, which we love, but it's also very, very dusty. Um, there are oak hard floors throughout the house. And fun fact, the oak on these floorboards actually came from the Longleat estate. So if you've heard of, sorry, that lighting is not ideal. If you've heard of the Longleat Safari Park, um, that is where our oak floor comes from. That was an interesting fact. Anyway, back to Dyson. So Charlie and I, as part of our work with Dyson, get to try out their latest and greatest launches. Some of my favorites recently have been the V15 Laser Detect. I did some Instagram stories on that the other day and everyone is just mind blown. It basically has these lasers that shoot out and it makes all the dust particles in your house really obvious. And it's kind of disgusting how when you think you've cleaned an area and then you turn on the lasers, you're like, no. There's still so much more dirt there. Um, but what is perfect for this room is another of their new launches and it is their micro. So I'll, ca I'll compare downstairs in a minute the um, size of this one versus our original and also in the collection, obviously size wise, in the size range is the outsize, which is also great for us in this house because it is quite a big house, so having the outsize is perfect for like downstairs, those high traffic areas, we use it a lot. But up here, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it's just me. <laughs> it's just me that comes up here. It's really just little bits of dirt um, and also things like window sills inside cupboards because especially in my shoe cupboards, for example, I, I just can't be bothered to like clean my boots every time I've finished wearing them. I don't clean things before bringing them up here. So I do get little bits of dried mud and grass and stuff in my cupboards. So this is my personal Dyson that I keep up here in this room. Um, and I'm just actually gonna empty it because it's a little bit gross me showing you this with what looks like, I mean, it looks like cake crumbs, I'm not gonna lie. So if you've never um, had a Dyson before, they are, they are bagless, so you don't need to buy bags. You literally just pop it open like that. Give it a little tap. And that's how easy it is to empty, which is one thing that I absolutely love about Dyson. You can obviously see all of the stuff that you have just vacuumed up in this little clear cabinet area, which is very, very helpful. So just because this one is smaller, absolutely does not mean it's any less strong. This will still, it still has the suction that you know and love and expect from Dyson. Um, I think it collects something like 99.99 recurring percent of micro molecules or rather for microscopic particles you don't get any loss of suction and the thing that makes it perfect for this house and especially this room is that the micro is actually specifically engineered for hard floors so the part that i keep on it the most is the typical what you would expect to see as like the main vacuum attachment did i actually mention how light this is by the way it's 1.5 kilograms which is absolutely nothing you can't actually believe that something so powerful could be so lightweight so it's really easy to click and change all the attachments i'll show you some of my other favorite attachments in a second but this is the one that i use um, for doing the floors the head is a little bit smaller than the typical dyson head once again you can just like clip it off and change it for something else you'll notice that normally when i hold things up my arm starts to ache straight away, but I cannot even begin to tell you how lightweight this is. It literally weighs nothing. Um, so this head, it's got these little fluffy sections and tiny little bristles. Again, I think it's a bit gross giving you a, a real close up. It's like showing someone your hairbrush, it's a bit gross. Um, but because of all the bristles and the fluffy bits, it does suck up everything that's on my floor. And because the suction is so powerful, it gets things that go between the floorboards as well, which is so useful in this house. So to give you an idea of 1.5 kilograms, that's, that's le definitely less than a bag of flour. I would say this weighs the same as my glass Le Mer moisturizer. You know, that little pot of moisturizer in the glass tub. 
It weighs like the same as that. It weighs absolutely nothing. Other Dyson functionalities you'd expect to find, including like no loss of suction, did I mention that already? 99% of microscopic particles. Um, and it also has clean air filtration. So when you are cleaning, as well as sucking in all the dust and all the dirt and everything, it actually expels clean air because the filter system is so clever within the Dyson technique, within the Dyson machines. Now I appreciate that not everyone might want to have a specific vacuum um, for a certain room in their house but I would say um, if you live in a small apartment then this is going to be absolutely perfect for you if you live if you have a studio apartment perhaps or maybe even just a room that needs cleaning a little bit more frequently a boot room uh, if we were to get another one of these I would say it'd be perfect for us to leave in the gym because obviously storage wise it's a lot smaller as well also fantastic for those that maybe just technically need something a little bit more lightweight for the elderly, for example, it would be a really good vacuum cleaner for those that just need something a bit more lightweight. And also for cleaning specific areas like your car, for example, this would be a really good cleaner. This would be a really good vacuum cleaner to keep in your car, maybe not with the long bit, but let me show you some of my other favorite attachments. So I would say actually up here my most used tool is this one and this is the combination tool. It's really good for cobwebs because this makes it, especially if I was to put it on the end of the long bit which I've just taken off, I can actually reach all the way up to the beams and get any cobwebs. And then if there's an area that's just got, you know, lots of dust, and needs a bit of a, a brush as well, then you can just slide that bit down and you can brush as well as vacuuming. This is also a really good attachment for upholstery. I do have, for example, my cushion under the window in that corner and for some reason that corner gets really dirty. I don't know if it's, well actually I'll show you exactly why it gets dirty. Okay, I'm really sorry to show you something so disgusting, but this does um, highlight my point quite well. Basically, there are areas of this house, like up here, where the wooden um, beams in the ceiling have quite a few gaps in them, and obviously before we lived here, no one, I don't think anyone had lived here for like hundreds of years. Um, so there's quite a lot of dirt and dust and debris up in between the floorboards and in the ceiling. So a lot of stuff does eventually fall down as the house moves, as we have the heating on, etc. So there's often like little bits of, I mean, this is a mixture of, we've got some dead flies, we've got some old plaster, we've just got general bits of dust and dirt, which is really quite disgusting. Um, and then underneath this area, we've also got my lovely little cushion. And in all of these little holes, it always gets really, really gross. So this is a perfect attachment for that because I just pop it on the cushion, on the whole area, on the button, um, and it just cleans everything, which is absolutely perfect. So while we're here, I'm gonna do this little section and then I will do the floors. Fun fun. Next, this is the uh, cupboard that usually gets the dirtiest because it's got my boots in that I'm wearing the most at the moment. And I have pulled the bristle nozzle back a little bit so it's got the more precise area because no one has got time to pull out their entire shoe collection to do the vacuuming. So I literally just like wiggle this in between the two. Um, and I find that if I put it on max mode so you can see that top button, it just gives it a little bit of a boost, which obviously does make the battery go down a little bit slower, but I have never been beaten by the battery before. I always finish and then get it charged ready for the next time. Um, I find that it's so strong that actually even if there is something like stuck underneath a shoe, it still manages to pull it out. So that is very, very helpful.
Okay, and I'll just finish by showing you the final tool that comes with this. I personally find that I use the other two more, so this one um, and the original hard floor cleaning tool. Um, but you do also get the mini motorized tool. Oh, look how gross this is, and I haven't even properly done the floors in here yet. You can see all the dust from my dressing room, and I only vacuumed in here on Thursday last week, which was like four days ago. This house literally emits dust, and you have never known a house to have cobwebs literally on the walls, not even like in corners, just on the walls, there are cobwebs. It's just a magic. <laughs> this would be a great haunted house. Perfect that this video is going up around Halloween. Um, anyway, this is the mini motorized tool, which is great for smaller areas because it's really, really dinky. It's also great for upholstery if you have got fabric or maybe even leather car seats great for that um i like to do my poof with this because yes i do i'm sorry i do put my feet up on the poof when i'm putting my shoes on um and again dust just falls from the ceilings everywhere in this house so i do have to clean my upholstery in here as well it would be even more useful if we put this downstairs for using on the sofas where the dogs sit dog beds everything like that and i used to find um doing the stairs quite challenging with a bigger vacuum head because it's just like quite a small area so because this head is smaller and this is literally i can't even tell you how lightweight this is because this is so lightweight and dinky with this head in particular it would be really really good for doing your stairs as well so loads of different uses for the dyson micro 1.5 kilograms i mean that's just absolutely insane so i'm going to finish my vacuuming by doing my poof and then Charlie has just shouted me for lunch and I think he's been to Quince and Clover and got something yummy. So that is my cue to stop cleaning, stop procrastinating and get on with some work. <laughs> Okay, I've had lunch and then some deliveries arrived, so we just went outside and took some photos. I realized a part of my hair routine that I forgot to mention earlier um, is that I always brush through my curls with a wet brush. And this makes a huge difference because any other brush, my hair goes fluffy, as you might be able to tell, very, very easily. Um, but if I use a wet brush, gosh, my eyes are watering because I've just been outside and it is chilly today. If I use a wet brush, I do find that it helps to keep my curls intact a little bit more. And this one I got on Amazon. Anyway, just had a delivery. And if I told you that this dress was from Chloe, what would you think to that? Let me show you. So obviously we've got this amazing detail here on the top. We've got this lovely bow. The blush color of it, in my opinion, is very Chloe-esque. I styled it with my Chloe C bag, which is also in this blush. I popped on my little Loewe belt because I did feel like it needed a little bit of cinching in around the waist. Sorry that the lighting is so strange, by the way. I'm having to use my mirror because it is one of those days and then i popped on my little um valentino boots as well it's got this beautiful pleating detail down at the bottom and these ruffles on the pleats but it's the neckline that i just absolutely adore i think this is such a nice detail and even at the back well you've seen the label now i'm busted <laughs> it is not in fact a chloe dress but it is from the high street i think let's see how much this was Definitely keeping this so the tag can come off. <laughs> £55. This dress was £55 and I think it is such a great, um, not even dupe, but it just feels like a far more expensive piece. Just looking in the mirror behind you, the material, it feels like a silk chiffon or like a dupion color the silhouette that lighting is probably a little bit better i've turned my artificial light off um but yes i think it is rather fabulous i'll leave this link in the description box down below and i also just styled it with my two or three year old reese shearling gilet this i feel really elevates so many different outfits i think it looks nice when you do have some really pretty detailing in the skirt of your dress in particular. It doesn't cover too much of the skirt. You can see it's just got these really unusual areas. Obviously the skirt is fully pleated 
um, and then it's got these little ruffles. I just am absolutely smitten, and this material is so lovely. I'll pop some video clips on the screen here that we just shot outside. Managed to catch a moment of sunshine on this very strange autumnal day. Um, so yeah, we just took some snaps of this outside. And I think I may potentially have a new favourite outfit for any events or any days in London that I have coming up uh, where maybe the temperature is a little bit warmer or if I am going to be inside for most of the day I think this might be my go-to outfit I just absolutely love it love the bow detail can't really see any jewelry that I'm wearing though apart from bracelets I have just popped on a fairly new Monica Vinander bracelet with the beautiful uh, diamonds in there and it's got this little dangling adjuster and then here I've got Astrid and Mew and Majuri and then these are all Astrid and Mew rings on this hand. I did get some other new bits in my high street order so I'll quickly do a little try on of those bits for you as well. Okay I'm not sure if I've done the right thing styling wise with this jumper because oh it is a very big neck. How does one avoid looking like I'm wearing a neck brace? <laughs> Maybe if I pull it down a little bit. Um, Lovely. So I have put on this classic Aran jumper. Now this is an Aran because it is in the cream colour. I have done my <laughs> research now. Um, it is a cable design but because it's in a cream I think that makes it Aran. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is also another lovely high street piece, really cosy, the kind of jumper that I stick on for, for everything really. Most days when I'm working from home, I just want to have a classic knit on like this, so this is absolutely perfect. A really nice classic kind of cable design, you can see it's got the traditional kind of crisscross, a little plait detail, a slightly different um, cable design, and a really nice chunky neck. It's quite interesting to compare the colour of this to my jeans actually. These just arrived in an order from Everlane along with some knit pieces but I might on Sunday do like an autumn winter knitwear try on um, for Sunday's fashion video. Let me know if that's something that you'd like to see. But if I show you the trousers you can see that they are like a crisp white colour. Um, oh dear we've got that crazy time of day lighting wise. Let me put my blind down. So yeah, the, the trousers, the jeans are very much white. I'm so out of practice, I never know how to style jeans. I like the cut of these, they're quite straight leg. Um, but I'm not sure about the darkness of the brown boots underneath. Let me know what you guys think. But I do like these jeans. I do really like these jeans, they fit really nicely. Uh, I'm just not sure if that is a fashion faux pas. Oh my goodness, I think I have just discovered the best jumper of all time. This is literally one of those things, as soon as I put it on, I just fell in love instantly. So this is a kind of plainish jumper, but then you have got a faux fur, super duper snuggly neckline and faux fur cuffs around the sleeves. You've got this little golden zip and I'm so happy that it's gold because then it goes with all my jewellery. How elegant and how gorgeous is this? The colour of it it's just off-white. Um, I will probably wear this mostly with leggings, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be, again, one of those jumpers that I wear a lot around the house on a snow day. This is going to be absolutely perfect. I've got it on with the white jeans again at the moment. Um, and I definitely think it would look better with non-white. But what a perfect jumper. If you like to elevate your basics like I do, then this is just so, so gorgeous. I hope that I get to go on a ski trip this winter. If I do, then this is perfect for apres ski. I know that Freddie is gonna love this as well, so I'm actually gonna send a picture to her right now. Oh my gosh, this is so soft. It's almost pink. I can't decide if it's just off-white or like a really pale blush, but it is so lovely, and the gold zipper. This looks so gorgeous, I'm almost speechless, almost speechless with how much I love this. Half of me wants to go outside and take some more photos while it's sunny, and half of me just wants to pop on a pair of leggings and live in this jumper for the rest of the afternoon. <sighs> Let me also show you the couple of coats that arrived in the order, and then we can make that very tough decision. <laughs> okay, not too sure how great these will look over the top of what I'm wearing, because it's not exactly um, peak coat to underlay outfit but right so first of all could not resist this classic oh my gosh this is so perfect so i love as i'm sure you guys know neutral colored coats 
and the lighter the better and this one is a real classic so lengthwise it is a more of a maxi style length you can still see a little bit of my ankle a little bit of boot it's a kind of like um I don't really know how to describe this material. It's like a pressed wool, or I think it might be called a boiled wool, and then you've got these tortoise shell um, style buttons. Once again, it's kind of got a very, very soft pinky hue to it. If you were to close it, I guess it would be double-breasted. We don't have a belt. Um, I, to be honest, I would probably wear something like this open. I haven't actually undone the pockets yet. There we go, nice big pockets. Yeah, this is this is a classic. This is a very Josie autumn winter coat. And I'm thinking material wise, because this one is from the high street, it's probably not going to be wool. Um, so it's probably quite a good one for this time of year. What does it say? Um, I'm not sure, but it would normally tell me if it's wool. Not the end of the world, but just probably not going to be the absolute warmest for like deepest, darkest winter. But for this time of year, in autumn, always some really nice thermals and layering bits on underneath. Love it. And with my curry bag to complete the look. Okay, here we have the penultimate piece in today's order, and it is this lovely dress, which is just the most perfect, I think I would call this like a paisley pattern. Um, it's a little bit, I would say a little bit kind of Indian-y. It's got some really nice designs on here, but I just love the really rich colours. A little bit different for me, a little bit more bold. Again, I think this would look really nice with the gilet. If I am wearing a dress where the pattern is a bit more bold and sometimes if I want to make it a little bit... What is my calendar telling me? Dog's orange tablet. Ah, I need to give them their... Um, <laughs> is it their anti-worm tablet? I don't know, something along those lines. I need to give them their orange tablet. The boys are fine taking tablets if I disguise it as cheese. So normally, I know it's not the best thing to do to give your dogs cheese, but I only give it to them for... A, a treat aka a tablet um, and I just grate some cheese and put some che grated cheese in the palm of my hand along with the tablet and they both both it just wolf it down so that's my uh, top trick gosh today's video has had a lot of procrastination oh Mentos <laughs> it's one of those days <laughs> What was I saying? Yes, if a dress has got lots of pattern and maybe I find the pattern a bit overwhelming then I like to add a plain item on top because um, then it just breaks it up a little bit and I find this gilet great for doing that. Once again, Loewe belt. Couldn't recommend this belt any more highly. If it's sold out, what I'm going to do is leave some other belts that I think would do this job just as well, link down below. But the dress is really lovely. It's quite a nice lightweight material so if you do find that your actual workplace or where you're spending the day gets quite warm, then you're not going to get too warm in this because it is almost, almost like a sheer material, almost like a georgette. It does actually have some metallic threads don't know if you can see um, running through lengthwise pretty much um, midi to maxi mid axi is that a thing so I've again paired with my Valentino boots and you don't really get to see much leg unless I'm really moving quite quickly um, so yeah it's a great dress to wear with ankle boots can see the belt a little bit more clearly to cinch it in around the waist. I do think it needs it because it does have this change in the direction of the fabric here, um, but it didn't come with a belt, so definitely going to want to add your own. And then the absolute last thing in this order is this coat. Now, ooh, <laughs> look like Count Dracula. I would probably call this a grey coat or greyish, maybe greyish. Um, does this one have a belt? It's got like a mock belt at the back there. It's more of your typical kind of wool. It's a lot, it's potentially a little bit softer than the other coat. Um, a little bit more of a kind of Peter Pan style collar. Could look really cute if you did decide to button this up. Um, and I really like this sleeve detail. It's, it's just completely gathered up. It is quite a voluminous coat in general. I don't know if I'd ever wear it like this, but I've literally just done up the top button so it's probably really annoying me keeping on moving the camera angle 
and it's almost quite cape-like but then when you're walking and moving it could probably just show some little glimpses of your outfit underneath yeah i really like this um sleeve detail let me know which coat you prefer down below very importantly of course it does also have really nice deep pockets yeah, just a little bit different. I think it's nice to go to the high street for coats which are a little bit different because I do have lots of classics in my wardrobe. I'm just not sure if I'd ever reach for a coat that colour because it's quite cool tone. Um, size wise, definitely size down. So this is a six, which is the normal size that I would get in a coat. And as you saw, it's pretty big. It's definitely an oversized design. I just think, yeah, I just think the colour is potentially a little bit cool toned on me but let me know what you guys think and I will leave all of these bits linked down below. Okay seeing as I'm showing you some new bits in my wardrobe I thought I would show you <sighs> this amazing dress. So this was an incredibly kind gift from a brand called Leo and Lynn which is an Australian brand and they sent me over their lookbook and I just thought this was the most beautiful dress that could work very well for any special upcoming occasions that might be happening in the next month, say someone turning 30. <laughs> it's the most beautiful neckline, I do love a sweetheart neckline, thank goodness I popped my fake tan on and it's mostly this earthy green shade, um, but then you've got these dazzling, almost gold mustardy coloured sections it's got a little bit of room is it leo lynn or leo and lynn sorry it is leo lynn leo lynn and then you have got this waist belt which i've actually not put on too tight because i did have a lot of bread at lunchtime <laughs> and then this wonderful maxi length i'm wondering if i might again go outside and try and take some photos because we have got a little bit of sunshine um but i thought i would show it to you and i think if i was to be arriving to, a, to an event at this time of year, I would probably want to pop something on over my shoulders, which is why these lovely capes from Mirta are so good. I just think it looks so elegant, and if you want to drop it over your shoulders like this, it still looks really, really lovely. Um, but if you get chilly, never underestimate how fantastic cashmere is at keeping you warm. And this one's obviously got that little a uh, very clever little cut in the cashmere there so if you need to be hands-free holding a bag holding a drink then this is perfect i believe i might actually have a discount for these capes or at least i will do very very soon if i do it'll be in the description box down below um and if not then keep an eye out because i should have a discount coming very very soon and it's something that is really really good especially for any events that you might have at this time of year and i've also styled it more casually i'll pop a picture up on the screen here but yes what do we think to the dress i'm going to go and get some snaps outside and if we get any good ones i'll pop them on the screen for you to see here so all of these try on clips i've been filming i don't know if you've been able to tell over the space of like three hours because we have been nipping outside taking photos and then i've been trying on other bits but it's about half past four now it's still glorious outside so i might go and take the dogs for a walk um but there comes a certain point in the day where i just can't do any more photos because my face starts to look so tired so i've just put on the jumper and then these are the amazon um I don't know what you'd call them, like support leggings, the tummy control ones, really, really high-waisted, um, and they are just so comfortable, especially if your jumper is a little bit more cropped. I find them the most flattering. And I think, to be honest, if you guys are planning on sticking around for Vlogmas, and I have um, had a few questions about it, yes, of course, I will definitely be doing Vlogmas this year, and I'll probably start it on December the 1st, so stay tuned for that. But I think this will pretty much be my vlogmas uniform hey chicken lynn stretching <laughs> i always want to know what's going on in that little boy's mind i thought i'd give you an autumn garden update seeing as it's such a lovely evening so we've actually pulled um a lot of the cosmos out from this border because they were really starting to go over gosh what a beautiful evening it is looking absolutely gorgeous though so we've got still lots of the phlox and geranium down here giving it some purple still and i think my favorite florals at this time of year are the anemone so these white flowers here i got dust on the screen 
Yes, the anemone, I think, will keep going until we get our first frosts. So if anyone is thinking of looking to add some colour into their borders at this time of year, I'd highly recommend the anemone. Some of the salvia is still going strong as well, and the grasses have just been growing all summer. Do you remember how tiny these little grasses were when we first put them in? And I couldn't imagine that they'd ever get to this big. And yet, here they are. So if we come down here, I feel a little bit sad about this area because I don't come down here very often now because there's not quite as much to pick, although it's still looking very green, but instead there's quite a lot of clearing that I need to do. And fun fact, today is actually bin day, so the bins are getting collected. Well, I have to take them out today, um, and Charlie. <laughs> We'll do it together and then they get collected tomorrow morning so what i like to do is just see if there's any bits that i can really clear from the garden and then they can go out and get collected tomorrow i have been using quite a bit of the kale i like to pick these little baby leaves um there's some weeds in there i could do with attacking some of the spinach can definitely be cut back this kale is doing pretty well lots of little curly leaves there i can snuffle and it looks like strangely my broccoli has had a spurt of growth Ah, I didn't even tell you about this. So this is a giant new uh, trug, would you call it a trug? Um, container, planter that we've had made from Burgess Reclamation. You can ask him to make basically anything out of reclaimed wood. They are seriously talented um, at making things there. So we commissioned this planter. I think I'll put some more veggies in it next year. I actually had some really bad news about my greenhouse this last week. So as you may remember, my greenhouse used to be here. It had to get taken down for our oil tank changes. Um, and way, way, way back months ago, I'll flip around and talk to you properly. I wasn't gonna tell you until it was happening, um, but turns out it's not gonna be happening for a long time now. But basically I have applied and now received planning permission for a beautiful 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 like my dream greenhouse um and i basically put down a hefty deposit about five months ago and i presumed stupidly that by putting down this hefty deposit it would put me in the queue um for like the building of the greenhouse getting them to make it and then when i got my planning permission through a few weeks ago i emailed them again and i said look guys great news i've got my planning permission um are you still still going to be able to come and build the greenhouse in december as we originally discussed and they were like oh no we actually didn't put you in the queue yet um but now you're in the queue and you can get your greenhouse in july next year so um yeah i'm basically going to be greenhouseless for the whole growing season next year which is a real a real shame because i've loved it so much i loved it so much this year um maybe i'll get like a pop-up temporary greenhouse if any of you guys have got any ideas i'd love to hear them because i really don't want to miss out on a growing season um and especially not next year because exciting things might be happening next year but anyway, I'm sure I'll be able to get some little planters, little plugs, um, and grow some bits in here next year. Not sure where it's going to end up living. We've cleared lots of the leaves from the pumpkins and squash from this area, and loads and loads of the cosmos are now gone from this area because it was just getting so wild. And it's actually really nice to see this area looking a bit more formal again because it just got so overgrown the cosmos were massive it actually really overtook some of my dahlias and as you can see these ones have fallen over which is such a shame because the cosmos just didn't allow them to grow anywhere other than outwards we've got some nice little white dahlias over there um i actually bought some gypsophila from farmer gracie planted it in this corner and it never grew so that's a bit of a head scratcher. My roses here have all finished flowering. The pumpkin patch that never really took off has been cleared. These roses, I think it's the time of year to cut roses back, so I might have to add that to my to-do list. Um, all the cornflower has been cleared, all the herbs cut back. And now you can actually finally see a lot more of my dahlias, which are so beautiful. Look at this. Can't wait to grow dahlias again next year. It's such a treat to have such lovely beautiful things in your garden at this time of year i just need to make time to come down here more because i do feel bad when the weather gets miserable i just i don't enjoy coming out as much as i do on fine evenings but yeah it's looking really really lovely still 
what else do I have to report? Dexy sniffing my peony bush. Um, lots of dried out seed heads here, which will probably drop seeds and then grow ready for next year. Now is the time of year that we're planting bulbs as well. Oh my gosh, look at my marrow. <laughs> Surely that's not gonna grow anymore. It looks ridiculous. There's actually some tiny little tromboncinis growing again in here. Actually quite a few. Is my ginormous one still here? Yeah, <laughs> look at this. I really don't know what to do with this. I mean, it's too big probably to eat. It probably wouldn't be very tasty, but yeah, there are some little ones in there. I'm not sure if they'll grow anymore. That one doesn't look... Yeah, could probably eat that one. What do you think, Dexy? What's the verdict? And my butternut squash just chilling over there. This is probably the prime time to pick this. I think it looks about the right size. And then we've obviously got some herbs that'll see us through autumn and winter. Parsley, got lots of thyme, fennel. Um, and then here, oh, we've got, is that my purple? purple kale got some autumn salads that are still doing quite well lots of carrots here ready for roast season i love the idea of coming out here and plucking up some carrots ready to have with our roasts um still got lots of onions here again great for roast season and i've st wow can you see that the world's biggest beetroot and i think we even have a couple of leeks over there so i think i might just clear some of these leaves um pop them in the garden bins, ready to get taken away tomorrow morning. Rosemary and Thyme doing well over there. Where's your younger brother, sir? Where's little chicken? Oh, hello again, darlings. Okay, I'm back inside after doing a little bit of tidying up in the garden and then just looking over my emails and uh, trying to keep on top of everything. At this time of year, with uh, Cyber Week and Christmas gifting coming up, it is a little bit crazy to say the least but we'll power through <laughs> we'll power through there's also some really lovely things coming up there's a few brands that are doing christmas events again this year um whereas obviously last year everything was paused because of covid um so there's lots of really nice things lots of nice emails coming into my inbox whether it's brands that would like to discuss collaborating on something or some lovely invitations so i can't complain but i've got yeah busy i hate being the person that's complaining about being busy but that is if you see me slowly start to wither away at this time of year <laughs> that would be why anyway on a more light-hearted note <laughs> um i thought i would share with you a few of the lovely beauty deliveries that have arrived today um starting off with i'm gonna do a, a show and tell of the harvey nichols gift with purchase. So I believe it's actually launching today, which is perfect timing. So if you spend over £225, if I've got any of these details wrong, I'll leave it in the description box. If you spend over £225, bring you a bit closer, um, in store or online on th or purchase three or more beauty products, then you'll get this sack, literally Christmas sack of products as your free gift with purchase. The bag itself is actually really, really nice. Um, I'm trying to think what I might use this for. It's a really lovely bag. It's actually one of those great bags that opens up really wide, so it could be actually just a really good makeup bag. So we've got some full-size products in here, some deluxe-sized products in here as well, and apparently everything in here is worth over £375, which is amazing. So let's have a little look at some favourites. I can spot some Sarah Chapman Skinesis branding. What's this? Platinum Stem Cell Eye Mask. Oh my gosh, that looks quite scary. Visibly de-puffed, lift, puffed, puff, lift the brow line, tighten the slackening lids. Wow. I think you literally put this over your entire eyeball. Interesting. Okay. Well, that sounds good. I'll give that a go. I bet that's like £30 by itself. We've got a little mini of the Pixie Glow Tonic, which is amazing, a little toner. That's a really good size popping in my travel bag. We have got an Eve Lom Cleanser, facial cleansing cream. Lovely. I love Eve Lom. Their products are really nice. Facial spray. Ooh. Well, that smells good. This is aloe herbs and rose water hydrating boost or midday pick me up a cult favorite face mist which helps revive dehydrated skin with a glowy dew dewy glow anytime anywhere well that sounds rather lovely what else do we have in here dr dennis gross 
extra strength daily peel to minimize the look of pores. I need that. Apparently there's something from La Mer in here. We've got a little dinky moisturizing cool gel cream. I think this is one of Charlie's favorites actually. I must say, even though teeny tiny, La Mer minis are just so cute. Look at that, isn't that adorable? In their little ceramic pot. This does weigh more than my Dyson, but it is the big version of this that um, literally weighs the same as the Dyson Micro. Midnight Recovery Concentrate from Kiehl's. What's this? We've got an MZ Skin, ooh, pl ooh, placenta. Placenta and stem cell night recovery mask. Okay, whose placenta is in this? And how did they get it? I don't know how I feel about that. Might not be putting that one on my face. Mm. We've also got fine to medium hair treatment mask from Way. Is it Way? Why? I'm pretty sure you're meant to pronounce that Way. What have we got from Fenty? Universal Lip Luminizer, the Gloss Bomb. Ooh, it's like a silver sparkly lip gloss. I think the Fenty packaging as well is just absolutely gorgeous. That looks really lovely. Gosh, there is just so much in here. I would be so delighted to receive this as a gift with purchase. Ooh, yes. Um, illuminating self tan drops from Tan Lux. These are amazing. Pop them in with your morning serum to give you a really nice glow. Oh, quarterly as well. Grapefruit. Oh no, Vino Perfect Dark Spot Correcting Glycolic Night Cream. This is actually my everyday, or should I say, every night night cream at the moment. I'm using this every evening, and it is brilliant. Mini Nars Mascara, Shiseido Firming Eye Mask. Um, Jade 888 Eau de Parfum, Augustine and Spader Rich Cream. There is so much in there. That is an amazing gift with purchase. So I'll leave all the details for that down below because I think if you're thinking of investing in any beauty bits ahead of Christmas, then you might as well get them from Harvey Nichols because you're going to get all of this for free. And you could literally, if you're planning on making your own Christmas crackers this year, which Charlie's sister Scarlett did last year. How nice to put little dinky minis that you got for free inside the crackers. In fact, I'm gonna give her a load of these bits to do exactly that. What a wonderful idea. So that was from Harvey Nix. Um, had a lovely package from By Terry with their new VIP, oh no, By Terry Terribly Paris. Yeah, I think it is the VIP. VIP palette and I, I am in love with these shades. Look at this. Oh my gosh, literally all the shades that I love to wear. We've got lots of neutrals. They're all a little bit shimmery, which is perfect for this time of year, but all in those brownie neutral tones. So I know for sure that I'll be getting a lot of wear out of this. I've started to do, not eyeliner, but like taking a really small brush um, and trying to do a little bit of a flick just to elongate my eye area. And I'm doing that with a darker eyeshadow shade. So this one has got some nice deeper shades that I can continue to do that with. And it is just such a beautiful palette. So, so lovely. What else, what else? I had a really nice delivery from Cult Beauty. They sent over some lovely bits and bobs, including Costa Brazil Soul Sunlight Body Oil. <laughs> it's a peculiar time of year to be investing in body oil unless you're going away anywhere. That is a very chic bottle. Oh my goodness, that is the chicest bottle I've ever seen. It's a matte white bottle with this gooey base, like a silicone base, like my cleaning spray that I was using earlier. So if you plunk it down, it's not gonna ruin your worktop. I want to plan a trip to the Maldives just to cover myself in that body oil. Uh, Westman Atelier iPods. I've, I think I've heard of this brand before, but I don't know anything at all about it. We've got this little trio of pods in here. Let's have a little look. Ooh, so it's like an individual eyeshadow. This one is a rather fabulous, almost emeraldy green shade. And then the middle one with this really lovely blush packaging. What do we have? Ooh, that is rather beautiful. This pinky toned eyeshadow, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Oh dear, look at the fake tan on my hands. I need to blend that out a little bit. And in the gold one, ooh, we have got a kind of purpley, 
brownie shade. Gorgeous. This packaging is so, so beautiful. Very aesthetically pleasing. Oh, and they magnetise together, so you could create a little stack. Love. So that's from Westman Atelier, and then they also sent one of the new Hourglass palettes, and I love the Hourglass palettes. If you want to get that glow in your complexion, whether it's with a powder or a blush or a bronzer, their Ambient Light palettes have always been such a huge favourite of mine. So this one I would swipe all over the face. Obviously at the moment my makeup needs to come off because I'm wearing it all day and I've got the light on behind me. Um, but this is a really nice one for swishing all over the complexion just to give you that little lift. If your skin is looking a bit dull, a bit tired, this gives you a really nice lift. They just change the colours ever so slightly each year for these palettes and they're always gorgeous. The most flattering blush shade because again it's almost like a blush mixed with a highlight you just get that glow full-on highlight and then some nice different bronzing shades and it's nice to have a light light at bronze to put all over your face and then a deeper bronze if you want to intensify in a few different areas so that is just absolutely gorgeous with this like pink marble um packaging so i love that thank you very much to cult beauty and then also had a lovely delivery from soak sunday they very kindly sent over a nice body lotion and bath salts which i've already put in the bathroom and this candle which is their rose rose and sea salt scented candle and it smells oh my gosh my tummy's actually rumbling i need to chop it um yeah it smells absolutely gorgeous so it has been a good day for deliveries as always, feeling very, very spoiled. Um, but now, I think I need to just go and um, sit on my laptop for a few hours. I've had lots of emails today that I need to sort. So darlings, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Meeting Hannah and Vicky to see Vicky's new flat in South London. Um, and then we're going to the Montcalm East Hotel for lunch. So I'll take you along and yes, I'll see you in the morning. I thought I would just quickly show you our dinner because it's one of these little hacks that on days like today I'm so grateful for and full disclosure I am going to be working <laughs> my baby boy I'm going to be working with All Plants on some sponsored Instagram stories and as part of that they've given they've given me a discount code which I believe is 15 Josie which gets you 15 pounds off your first box um, but obviously this is not sponsored but I am a genuine All Plants customer we've Charlie and I have been receiving All Plants for well over a year now and we just love it because obviously we live in the middle of nowhere we can't get delivery and if we don't have anything in the house for dinner or we can't be able to cook we're a bit snookered so we just love having these in the freezer um they're fairly healthy as well they're actually all plant-based meals charlie and i are not vegan but we don't eat meat in the week so um it's nice for us to have these plant-based chef-made meals and they are just absolutely scrumptious so this one is a butternut and barley risotto and then this is a chicken katsu curry and oh my gosh my mouth is literally watering just thinking about it they are so so yummy and the great thing is on days like today when i just can't be able to cook anything um i literally i just whack them in the aga they're normally about 40 minutes for them to cook really easy cooking instructions i can't remember if i need to stab this one yeah remove the oh remove the chicken okay Place on a baking sheet, cook the tray in an oven for 35 to 40 minutes, and then cook the chicken in, an, in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. Amazing. So I just have to separate the chicken out with this one. So we're very, very grateful to have these in the freezer for nights like tonight, and they are so, so tasty. So I'm going to leave my All Plants link and discount code in the description box down below if you'd like to try it. I'd highly recommend. These are the portions for two people, but we get very hungry, so we like to share two double portions. Charlie honestly eats the same as five grown men. So um, yeah, we definitely double up most evenings when we're hungry. While the food is in the aga, I realized I did promise to show you the different sizes. So here they are, my three little babies. We have got in the middle, obviously, is the micro, the one that I've been showing you today, the one that is super duper lightweight. And you can see that the head is significantly smaller than the original, which is this one with the yellow. I say this is the original. This is actually the V15 Detect, so it does have the jazzy lasers. And then next to it is the big outsize so the dyson outsize is basically their massive vacuum cleaner if you compare the um 
I never know what you call this bit, the dirt collection area from the outsize to the micro, you can see it's a huge, huge difference. So that's something to bear in mind if you do live in a big house or a particularly dusty house like ours. Um, and then again, the original size next to that, the V15. And yeah, it's quite a good visual representation to see them all like this. Lengthwise, it is, I think, exactly the same. Maybe the outsize is a little bit longer, but it's really the, um, the heads and the suction machinery section at the top here that is the biggest difference. And of course, the weight of the micro just being so, so super duper lightweight. Okay, it's always quite challenging showing you food in this orange lighting, but here we have part one of our dinners. <laughs> there is still another little bit of risotto in the oven, which Charlie is going to finish off when he's polished off this bowl. So this is the um, butternut squash risotto and it's got some actual bits of butternut in the top there. I did just try a little bit and it is scrumptious. Some onion and I think it's some crumbled nuts on top to give it a little bit of crunch. And then sometimes Charlie and I'll eat the same thing, but obviously it's just as easy to whack a different one in. And I have got these chicken katsu, I think it's probably gonna be tofu, and this sauce smells amazing. It's making my mouth water, it's really nutty. It's tofu, I think it's meatless farm, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is, you're right. Well, it's a nice way of trying some meat for your alternatives. So this is our dinner for the evening, and I will see you guys tomorrow for a day in London. Good morning, my darlings. Another lovely day again today, and today I had a fairly early start and have now just arrived into London. I'm getting a taxi over to my friend Vicky's new house and today's gonna be a really nice girly day. Um, after seeing Vicky's new place, we are heading over to Shoreditch and meeting Hannah and little Leo for a lunch and then maybe a little bit of a spa afternoon as well. I have been treating the train and now the taxi as my office. I have got a lot of things that I need to edit and upload so every sitting moment is an opportunity to try and catch up with work but annoyingly I think the memory on my phone must be full because every time I try to upload an Instagram story it just loads for like 15 minutes so over the last two hours I've only managed to upload four Instagram stories and they're sponsored Instagram stories which is a real pain um, but never mind it's one of those days where everywhere just looks so beautiful it's that low autumn sunshine the trees turning golden and turning brown it's a really really lovely day um, and it's nice to be in London for a day that doesn't involve any work meetings or work events so I thought I'd bring you along with me and I shall see you when we get there. So we are just now driving down Clapham High Street and I've actually not been back to Clapham since we moved house last year and here's a fun fact so we're about to drive past Edgeley Lane and the first place I ever lived in London, aside from student accommodation, was this house here. Mine and Charlie's bedroom was the one with the blind open. <laughs> I think that was it. Oh no, it was that one with the green scaffolding. And then it ended up with us having to leave when there was a house fire. <laughs> Long story, but yes. Oh, there's a Taco Bell on Clapham High Street now. Let's see what else is new. KFC's still there. That used to be Strada, that brown one. London Grace, that is where I always used to go for my manicures. My old tube station, Clapham Common. <laughs> and if you guys watched my very emotional moving vlog, you might remember us driving down this section here following the moving vans. But what you didn't see is that I was crying hysterically, but luckily Charlie's dad was on the phone, <laughs> keeping me from completely losing my mind. So this country gal has made it to Shoreditch and I think we're actually going to go in this building which has always intrigued me, this middle one. It always looks like a bit of a trick of the eye. You can't, I can't actually tell if it's straight or if it's a, if it's a triangle. It's really peculiar architecture. Um, but we're going into the hotel which is called the Montcalm East and uh, that's where we're meeting Hannah for lunch. Andiamo! More and feed me. Very full 
after our delicious lunch. I would definitely recommend going there for lots of little snacky bits. Like I had a truffle hummus, had lots of salami, uh, Vic's had some padron peppers, some gnocchi, and great G&Ts as well. And I've realized that directly behind us is Moorfields Eye Hospital, which is where I had my laser eye surgery done like 10 years ago now. Um, I think our next stop, we're gonna head to donut time, get some donut, and just explore around the local area. It's a little bit chilly, so I don't think we'll stay out too long. And then I'm gonna get the train home and have a bit of a relaxing evening. And they and fresh every day. Yahoo! We've arrived at donut time. <laughs> and they have got. <laughs> These are my coolest friends. <laughs> oh my god. So they have got a Halloween themed donuts. We've got Biscala, we've got Tinchy, oh my god, I love the names. Tinchy Spider, Bueno Mars, Monster Mash, Ice Ice Baby. Oh, is that why you were singing it? I understand. Nice. Ice yeah. Baby. <laughs> See you later. I might get a Jack of Black um, and a Candyman. Oh. Ooh, I don't know, I want them all. Oh my God. Finally home again, and I'm just about to go and take my makeup off and get into bed and have an early night, but I thought I would just show you my, I was about to say my pumpkin selection, my donut selection, so I ended up getting the red velvet, see ya later. I think this one, I mean, that looks really boring. I'm pretty sure I didn't order a plain one. I think I've been fobbed off a little bit there. Um, but I got this one, which has got the hundreds of thousands. Oh, maybe that's cinnamon sugar. I don't know, it looks very boring. Um, and then this one, which is the pumpkin face. So I'm gonna take this one up to enjoy now, because it looks scrumptious. Take my makeup off, take my makeup off, and get into bed for an early night. Gosh, it actually feels like ages since I last finished a vlog, or even started a vlog. Do you remember I always used to start them in this little windowsill area? Um, but I thought I would just do a very, very quick take the day off with me to um, finish today's vlog. I literally could not wait to get my cosy jumper back on again. I seriously think I'm just going to be living in this for the rest of the autumn winter season. Sorry again about this awful lighting. But as always, I'm just going to start by taking the majority of my makeup off with one of my face halos. And my vlogging camera battery just died. It is a sign that I need to finish filming. So I'm just gonna end my skincare routine by filming on my phone. I've just popped his little lovely headband on um, and I'm going to use, ooh, this is what I mean by the way about my, <laughs> you can see the old broken one in the bin, um, our sink having these rails. What do you think of the phone quality by the way? I always think it's a little bit rubbish compared to the camera. Um, yeah, our sink has these rails, so it's really useful for hanging my wet brush. Anyway, um, oh, and this is, I am so distracted today. My brain is like a little scattergun. Face Halo with their pink set also released a um, an exfoliating one, which is great if you just want to get a little bit more exfoliation. But to be honest, mostly I use Face Halo just to get rid of the initial bit of makeup so that when I use my cleanser, um, it's actually cleaning the skin as opposed to, you know, just cleaning the makeup off, which is why it's so important to double cleanse. So I'm going to use the Plumtastic Apricot Butter Cleansing Balm from Beauty Pie. I'm really, really enjoying using that. And then what will I use? I normally then go in with something from the Elemis Superfood Collection. I love the fruit vinegar liquid glow. You can see I'm almost through this one. And then I'll normally just pop a serum on while we have dinner if I do my makeup removal a little bit earlier. Also loving the Elizabeth Arden Retinol Ceramide Liquid uh, Line Erasing Eye Cream. And then Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair. Also love using that. To be honest, I just come to this cupboard and pick and mix from my apothecary of products, depending on what I feel like my skin needs. And in the mornings, something like the Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream. My skin absolutely loves that at this time of year. Also the Amora Vixa Midnight Recovery, a really nice night cream. But yeah, tonight after putting on my Elemis Toner with the AHAs, which is a very gentle, nice exfoliation. I think, to be honest, because I faked tan my body yesterday, I might spritz a little bit of Saint Tropez on my face, just so that can be gradually tanning me before I come up and do my night cream later on. It's actually better lighting on the iPhone, I think, isn't it? 
seems to be a wider picture. Um, this is not quite as nice texture as the Elemis Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm, um, but I did run out of my Elemis, so I thought I would give this one a try. And it does, I think it has similar properties, you know, my makeup is gone, so this is really just cleaning the skin. That's why the face halos are so effective. They really do um, get rid of all your makeup. I would never just use a face halo, but it's so good for that first cleanse. And to be honest, I think I'll just use them for the rest of my life. They are that good. And I'd highly recommend um, getting them as stocking fillers as well. So I like to just put a little bit of warm water on my fingers, turn this into a milk. So I've taken that off with some warm water and a mitt, and then I use a reusable cotton pad on my Elemis Superfood AHA. And as I said, the AHAs in this are just a really, really gentle, it's me kicking my bin, just a really nice, gentle everyday exfoliation, which I think keeps my skin glowing. And then I pop my reusable cotton pad in these little wash bags, which you can get on Amazon. I'll leave linked down below and then and my face halo, oops, and my face halos just go straight in the washing machine i don't bother putting them in a pouch i'm actually going to pop on some of the galan fortifying lotion this is just nice and hydrating it helps the rest of your skincare work a little bit better i always think it's a good sign if you've nearly finished a skincare product this is the rose lifting serum from Amora Vixa. I always think that this is quite a good just neutral serum. Um, if I don't feel like my skin needs anything in particular, then I'll pop that one on. It's always good to have some lifting properties within your skincare. Another benefit of doing your skincare before you go and relax for the evening, um, obviously my evening is pretty much over. I'm just going to sit in bed and do some work on my laptop now. Um, is that if you are wearing something with a nice collar, like a white jumper, then you're not going to end up getting makeup on your dressing gown or your pyjamas. So with that in mind, I'm actually just going to use my hair towel um, to protect the neckline of this jumper while I mist my tan. Okay, so that is my finished evening skincare routine. Darlings, I've never entered a vlog on my phone before. I feel like I always look here, which is where the screen is, instead of here where the camera is. But darlings, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you on Thursday for the next one. Bye.